Punga kar panje gengarum Mai fada da chikawa wanum Malam na surjarum Wanda ke damun From employing over 13,000 new teachers early 2018, he plans to employ almost double that number, a total of 25,000 new teachers, to building new classrooms in primary schools across the state and renovating some of the oldest secondary schools. The Kaduna State Government has taken steps to reform the education sector. Another priority area of focus for the administration of Governor Nasser El Rufai upon assuming office was the need to address the challenges facing the state's healthcare system. Education and health go together. They both constitute what is referred to as human capital. Um, an educated person that is healthy is not of much use. A healthy person without education is not of much use to society. You need to have both. Uh, so that you get the best out of any human being. And this is why in our uh, election manifesto, the first item is education. The second is health. Official figures put the population of Kaduna State at over 6 million, with an annual population growth rate of 2.47%. But the state government projects the population estimates range between 8 million to 10 million. Looking at the health indices in Kaduna State, at the time this government came to office, maternal mortality stood at taking the national average 576 um, per 100,000 live births. Uh, although this is the national average, we do know that it's worse in the northwestern region where Kaduna is. And um, under five mortality, you know, based on the NDHS 2013, um, was 180 per 1,000 live births, while infant mortality was 115 per 1,000 live births. Then um, only 32% of our children were fully immunized. The HIV prevalence based on the NAS survey 2012 stood at 9.2%, uh, placing Kaduna almost the second highest in the country. The state government set out to change these indices, and to achieve this, the government sought to find out the crucial challenges facing the health system. found out that essentially um, people lost faith in the quality of healthcare that had been provided, largely because the facilities were in dilapidated conditions, um, there were no medicines, and then the human resources manning such health facilities were grossly inadequate. And so the main thing that drove all these poor health indices is the fact that um, the health system was broken. And so naturally, the first thing that this government thought about doing, which to me is very plausible, is to find how to fix the health system in Kaduna State. Because if you don't fix the health system and make it strong, then whatever investment you make will just go down the drain and you won't be seeing any commensurate improvement in the health indices. Um, so what did the government do? The key thing, which actually is the fulcrum of the intervention of this government, is the resuscitation of primary health care. When we were being briefed, we were told that on average, every day in Kaduna State, 300 women die during childbirth. We thought that number was 
impossible. We thought it was exaggerated. Um, and, but it was a call to action. It immediately told me that it means that on average about 10 women die every day in each local government during childbirth. That is unacceptable. It's totally unacceptable. Pregnancy should not be a death sentence for anyone, no matter how poor. But the reason for that is, was because 82% of our pregnant women give birth at home. They don't go to the hospital. They don't, they don't go through prenatal, antenatal, or postnatal care. They have no confidence in the primary health centers. We did not have enough midwives. So, so many things we found were responsible for our very poor and I would say scandalous infant and maternal mortality statistics. So we were determined to address the problem. And the solutions that we got from the experts after studying the problem is one, to promise that we'll provide free uh, prenatal, antenatal, and postnatal care. Okay? Would provide free medical care to pregnant women and their babies until these, the babies become children of the age of five. Plus, free medical care for senior citizens above the age of 70. Okay? So this was part of what we included in our manifesto. Uh, but when we came and we were briefed on the extent of the problem, we became even more scared. <laughs> The key thing, which actually is the fulcrum of the intervention of this government, is the resuscitation of primary health care. Because um, is the worst hit as far as the levels of health care is concerned, not just in Kaduna, but in the country as a whole. And so the first thing that the government did in order to fix primary health care was to bring up a legislation. And the first executive bill of this government had to do with primary health care, which was actually um, I mean, signed and assented to into law by the governor on the 1st of September 2015. You can see how, quick, how quickly this was done. And with this legal framework in place, the government became now empowered to you know, bring about uh, the adoption of certain national policies, one of which is adopting the policy of one primary health center per political ward that will provide full services. Secondly, is the adoption of the primary health care under one roof. As a governance principle, we don't hide or minimize the many problems we, we have inherited or pretend that our coming into office has wished them away. Rather, we acknowledge our body and seek solutions. With this legislation on primary health care under one roof in place, the state government commenced work on primary health centers across the state. There are 255 wards in the 23 local governments in Kaduna State. So we picked one in each ward and said we'll pick that one primary health center, expand it, equip it with all the tools needed to save a pregnant woman from death. And we approached General Electric uh, Healthcare to provide us basic equipment that you need in each primary health center. And they came up with a list of basic equipment we negotiated and we contracted out that to them. Uh, then, we, then we had to identify the primary health centers that will be uh, 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 equipped and upgraded. And we chose primary health centers such that within each ward, you would not need to travel more than five kilometers to access a functioning primary health center.
if you have all this equipment, you have all these people, if you don't have water, if you don't have electricity, things won't work. Uh, because you need uh, you need refrigeration to keep the drugs and, uh, and 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 vaccines fine. So we now had to invest in solar power. And here, the UK Department for International Development came in and uh, established mini grids in 34 of such primary health centres, just for us to see proof of concept. You know, uh, you can use solar power to provide 24-7 electricity in all these primary health centers. So we have that in 34, and the success of that led the European Union to offer us another 10 million euros to equip another 40 to 50 of such primary health centers. So we have about, nine, yeah, about 90 that are so equipped. The balance of 160, we are equipping ourselves. We'll break our backs to ensure that healthcare in Kaduna State gets better. We will not let you down. The event to sign the memorandum of understanding between these world stage development partners was also an opportunity for commendations for the state. We're going to be working with you very systematically. We're going to have not just technical assistance to support you as we've done through uh, HSDF uh, for, this, for this time, but we'll also have direct um, assistance to you, financial assistance to the state, so that it can jumpstart a lot of the obstacles, some of the obstacles that, ex that exist. So we're profoundly grateful for your commitment and your dedication to this. And we know that uh, we can count on it going forward because a lot of your energy and your passion and your commitment is what drives uh, this, this, this work. This memorandum arises out of a frank assessment of the health challenges faced in Kaduna State. This is a real commitment by serious actors, the State Government, Your Excellency under your leadership, the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation and the United Kingdom Department for International Development to improve the primary health care services, to improve access to those services fundamentally to improve the lives and life chances of countless thousands of people. Kaduna State, under the leadership of His Excellency, remains the only state that has provided and met the budgetary provision as provided by the state team and released the funds completely. And realize that apart from the funds being released, the results achieved was also the best in the country. Yearly budgets are also said to have contributed to the investments needed. Since uh, we came into office, we have been ramping up investments in health. The budget that we inherited had 3% for health. Today, 16.1% of our budget is on health care because we believe very strongly in taking preventive steps at the primary health care level uh, to look after the health of our people. These investments have contributed to the building of bigger primary health care centers with better facilities in different parts of Kaduna. Ya zama sabon gari kawai gaba daya wanda shi dukkan matafi in dai mutum maki masoyin Allah ne in dai masoyin Allah ne ya fito Kaduna ya fito Zare ya zo nan ya kama hanyar Jos yana zuwa nan zai ga garin nan ta canza a dalilin wannan asibiti kaga mun samu soki da mu kanmu da mata ya mu da yaya mu da jikokin mu kaga alhamdulillah kuma ga shi yanzu wannan mai girma gwamnati ya zo ya kara mun da dai sun wannan asibiti ta zo kan muna ingila Thank you.
We appreciate the solar uh, system that is here in this facility. In fact, I see it as a privilege to be among the facilities that have the biggest solar panel that supply 24 hours light in this facility. That makes us to be 24 hours all around in the facility in order to see the clients. Whilst applauding the efforts of the state administration in tackling the health challenges facing citizens, this retired nurse who leads a civil society, however, highlights some areas for improvement. When we went around to check those facilities, we took into cognition the minimum standard requirement of a primary health center. That is to say, the number of rooms in each of the facilities, the number of staff, the equipment, and every other thing. We looked at the minimum requirement before we went to check the level of completion of those 77 facilities out of the 255 that were said to be completed. And when we made that observation, we presented it to the government at the quarterly budgetary performance thing. And the commissioner actually confirmed, yes, there was that kind of challenge they had from the beginning. And even the officer who was able to do that was queried, you know, during that, uh, I mean, when they realized that before they, already they have already issued the contract, but they have t they found out those little things that were left behind, which we found out during our own visit. And they said the government is really wanting to review some of those things after the completion in order to make it the minimum standard primary health center. Not all of them actually. One issue that continues to be a challenge for Nigeria is ensuring basic immunization services are readily available to its citizens. However, this is a problematic issue the Kaduna state government says it has confronted. We went into partnership with very reputable organizations. One, to strengthen routine immunization in the state. Remember, I told you one of the vision of the state is to prevent diseases, particularly in children. And uh, the most reasonable thing to do, therefore, is to remove the main cause of death in children and that is death from vaccine preventable diseases. And so we first of all concentrated on strengthening routine immunization in the state. We found out that the, um, there is a gap in the cold chain equipment in the entire state, which we calculated. And by the grace of God, um, we have now filled this gap. We bought um, solar drive refrigerators um, that are distributed to our primary health centers um, for the storage of these vaccines. And by the grace of God, we have noticed a tremendous improvement in the number of children that are fully immunized. We are not yet there, but at least the trajectory is that of improvement. For example, in 2014, just a little about 200,000 children under five years of age were fully immunized. In 2017, you know, we've recorded far more than 300,000 that are fully immunized. So we're happy with the improvement. Talking about immunization, we've been able to maintain, um, you know, um, polio-free status since 2002, November. I mean, 2012, November, uh, due to hard work, uh, because once you get to a level, uh, it's very important that you maintain that level. So we have ensured that we maintain routine immunization for polio and then the supplemental immunizations that go on a monthly basis uh, where we go house to house to immunize children. The secondary healthcare hospitals also benefited from the investments in equipment to upgrade healthcare in the state. 
we were really short of nurses. We were used to run to Kaduna and receive the same complaint from almost all the facilities. But of recent, with the recent employment in the state, the deployment of about 49 nurses to this facility actually is of tremendous importance to us. The same thing with the medical aspect, the doctors. We were initially, we were just seven, and then uh, this new employment, about 12 doctors were posted to us. As God will have it, nine reported and they are on ground working. So they have really relieved us. Equipment-wise, let me even take X-ray department. X-ray department, we, we were managing with a very small uh, X-ray equipment supplied to us by the Netherlands through TB program. But uh, you saw it, um, one of the most modern machines now, a fluoroscope. Three were procured by the Kaduna State government. And I'm happy to announce that actually that Okabachan has been successfully installed. We got two new uh, operating tables, two new operating lamps. You now see very well, you do your surgery comfortably. And not see all these have helped improve performance. It has helped improve outcome. And it has helped improve mobility, mortality, and again, creating demand for the hospital. Because when you go and you get what you want, it makes life easier. The second aspect, as I told you about the drugs, that too also created demands. Because patients now know that whatever drug they obtain in this facility, actually they are genuine drugs. Across Kaduna, so much has been achieved, and yet more still remains to be done. How soon can this health system be fixed? I believe that the broken health system can be restored much more easily than education. Okay, because for health, what you need really is to have the physical facilities, the equipment, and the, 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 the personnel, and they are there. And confidence comes back in the communities to know that if I have a problem, if I go there, there will be someone to attend to me. There will be equipment to look at me. To look. So, so I believe that uh, I, you know, if we get re-elected, we would have completed the primary health care development uh, strategy completely, we would have put in place our our, our, our service plan that every person in Kaduna State will be entitled to a health care package and our comprehensive health insurance scheme which has been passed into law by the State House of Assembly would have been fully entrenched uh, such that when you go to hospital you don't have to bring cash out to pay for treatment. Once you're a contributor to the scheme you get more or less uh, free uh, medical care up to a certain level. Uh, I think we'll be able to achieve that in the next five years. Uh, so that is easier to, 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 to establish uh, than education. Education takes a bit longer. But w I believe that the rate at which we have uh, uh, gone and uh, the improvements we've already seen in our health indices uh, by the end of 2023, I think we should be in a comfortable position for everyone. Kaduna State, like other states in Nigeria, faces challenges in the drive to achieving significant progress towards the attainment of the goal of universal health coverage. But what is clear is that tangible efforts are being made to achieve this goal. And in the education and health sectors, these reforms stand as symbols of this administration's promise to always put its people first. <laughs>